process. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village Board meeting of August 22nd. Please join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our Deputy Clerk, Nancy Adams, is here tonight. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell. Here. Trustee Willis. Here. Trustee Colton. Here. Trustee Heiferman. Here. Trustee Harris Jones. Here. Trustee Roman. President Hofeld. Here. Representing staff this evening, to my left, our village manager, Napoleon Haney. To my right, our village attorney, Chris Cummings. To the audience's right, our police chief, Denise McGrath. Fire chief, Bob Grabowski. Community and Economic Development Director, Angela Maceres, and Assistant Village Manager, Tyler Hall. The minutes of August 8th, any additions or corrections, Trustee Purcell, uh, Trustee Willis, uh, Trustee Colton, all good. Trustee Heiferman, uh -huh. Trustee Harris-Jones. I have a motion to approve mm -hmm. the minutes, please. So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Colton, seconded by Trustee Harris-Jones. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell. Aye. Trustee Willis. Aye. Trustee Colton. Aye. Trustee Heiferman. Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones. Aye. The minutes are approved. The claims list in the amount of $679,290.12. Comments or questions? Trustee Purcell. Okay. Trustee Willis. None. Trustee Colton. Happy. Trustee Heiferman. No questions. And Trustee Harris-Jones. All good for me. May I have a motion to approve the claims list, please? So moved. And moved by Trustee Purcell, seconded by Trustee Colton. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell? Aye. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones? Aye. Claims list is approved. Of that $679,000, two items comprise the majority of that claims list. Our pavement patching program was $311,000, and our previous, previously approved purchase of police, public works, community, uh, enforcement vehicles was $159,000 that amounted to $470,000 or 69% of that claims list. Hear from the audience. If anyone in the audience would like to address the board on any subject not on the agenda, please raise your hand. All right, at this moment, may I have a motion to approve the appointment of Gerald Fritz to the Ethics Commission? So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Colton, seconded by Trustee Purcell. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell? Aye. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones? Aye. Motion is approved. Mr. Pritz is not here this evening. You said he he wasn't sure if he was able to make it. Correct. Okay. We'll, we'll swear him in at a, at a later date. The omnibus vote, Mrs. Adams. The board is asked to reappoint Tony Grieb to the tree committee for a three-year term ending on August 22nd, 2026. The board is asked to reappoint Philip Kasanovich to the Economic Development Committee for a two-year term ending on August 22nd, 2025. The board is asked to pass Ordinance M-2262 granting a special use permit to allow a solar energy collection system. Inc. Inc's International Inc. Company at 1000 Maple Avenue has contracted with General Energy Corporation to construct a ground mount solar system on two acres of vacant land adjacent to its industrial building. The intention is to reduce the company's energy usage by 66%. The village's new zoning ordinance addresses sustainable developments. In this case, Inks needs a special use permit because the solar field will be next to, rather than behind, their building, 
and the panel's height will be seven tenths of a foot higher than the village's maximum height. This was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The board is asked to pass ordinance M2263 for a special use permit for the operation of a crematorium by Mana Crematorium at 17803 Bretts Drive in the village's limited manufacturing zoning district. Planning and Zoning Commission approved the application, but stipulated that the business must comply with all state and federal certifications and licenses. The board is asked to authorize President Hofeld to enter into an agreement with Hera Property Registry, LLC of Melbourne, Florida for the tracking and reporting of all vacant and foreclosed properties within the village. The village's building division previously used ProChamps Incorporated for this registry, but that company is going out of business. Thank you, Trustee Heiferman. Um, I asked that um, item D be separated. Very good. Any other items? No. Okay. With that, uh, any comments from anyone in the audience with regard to items A, B, C, or E? Item D will be discussed separately. Board comments on those items, A, B, C, or E? Nothing. Trustee Willis? I have no comment. Trustee Colton? No. Trustee Heiferman? Um, I'm excited about the uh, solar panel project. I think that's innovative, and I'm um, glad to see it on here. Trustee mm -hmm. Harris, -Dillon. I agree. Uh, but other, otherwise, no comments from me. All right. May I have a motion to approve all items except item D? So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Colton, seconded by Trustee Willis. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell? Aye. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris-Jones? Aye. Those items are approved. Item D, Ms. Maceres? Item D is an application by Jeffrey Sachs, who is here this evening um, for a special use permit to operate a crematorium, MANA crematory, within a vacant 1,800 square foot commercial condominium, building C of the Homewood Business Park condominiums at 17803 Bretts Drive in the M1 district. The proposed location is one unit within a multi-tenant commercial business park with three buildings. It is currently vacant. Other uses within that building are a plumbing contractor, baseball academy, there's a, an additional crematorium in the in the um, condo park, a brewery and tap room, and a baseball manufacturer, bat manufacturer. So the Homewood Zoning Ordinance classifies crematoriums as a special use. In 2008, the zoning ordinance was amended to allow this as a special use um, in order to allow the Cremation Society of Illinois to operate in the Southeast building of the Homewood Business Park and the crem crematorium is currently in operation and has also recently expanded. The proposed crematorium would be located in the same business park, but in a different building to the north and west and in line with in the building. The zoning ordinance has special sets standards for all crematoriums that it would have to meet, um, including minimum spacing from residential properties, schools, or public playgrounds and parks. Um, exterior doors have to remain closed so that the cremator um, cannot be visible from the public right of way. All business vehicles um, may not be visible from the public right of way and have to use the back. And the crematorium has to comply with all state federal laws and regulations. At the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on August 10, with six members present, the commissioners voted two in favor or two against did four in favor, which is a positive recommendation. And members of the audience at the hearing spoke um, against the application, stating that the business owner had never operated a crematory and with concerns about safety issues of the operation, and as well as issues with the lease at not having been approved by the association. Um, do you have any additional questions? 
Okay. Is the petitioner here tonight? Yes, I am. Please come up. Tell us what your plans are, please. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what was that? What are your plans for the crematorium? Okay, um, basically my plans for the crematorium is to service funeral homes for um, their families for cremation services um, and just trying to, um, as far as concentrate on, on that end of the, the business, um, not necessarily the public, but um, just to be there to support funeral homes and, and their needs for um, cremation services for, for all their families. What's your experience in this? Uh, I've been in the funeral business um, for 31 years. I've, uh, um, I've had uh, two positions as managers in two separate funeral homes. I've worked in funeral homes that had crematories. So I, I have crematory experience. I've experienced running the machines. Um, I have experience in, in the cemetery industry as well. The, the places I've worked at was a combo unit to where the funeral home was, was on a cemetery grounds. Um, so my experience just all encompasses the funeral business from, from cremation to you know funerals and cemetery services. Are you currently operating one? No, I am not. Where is your nearest one that you have worked in in proximity to home with? Uh, the nearest one would be uh, Burns Funeral Home, which is in Crown Point, Indiana. You you operated that one? Yes, uh, they're pet machines I've operated, um, and I assist it with, with the human machines as well that's on that facility. How do you happen to choose this site? Uh, I'm originally from Chicago Heights, so I'm, I'm from the area. Um, I had current plans to build a crematory in South Holland. And um, th that that whole um, uh, that whole deal got got sidelined um, due to some uh, problems with the contractors that were hired to uh, actually build the building. So this was uh, like like another option, a secondary option for me to get up and going. Would you like to tell us anything about it, else about your operation? About the operation? About what you what you're planning on doing? Um, just uh, myself personally and in, involved in in day to day operations. The operation of the business. Um, basically, um, just partner with with the local funeral homes um, to cremate their their bodies for for their families. Um, uh, we're also going to be doing transportations as well um, to make it a little bit easier for them, um, and then we're going to be delivering cremates as well. Are you aware that there's another crematorium in proximity to your location? Yes, I am. Actually, I was I was a subcontractor of theirs uh, until just recently. So I, I, I've had a long relationship with them since about 17, 2017, as a subcontractor doing removals, which is picking up uh, deceased individuals for them and bringing them to their location. Okay. Let's open up to the audience. Comments or questions from anyone in the audience with regard to this matter? Raise your hand if you have. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Gary Sullivan. I'm the president of the Cremation Society of Illinois. Why don't you sit in the audience and sure. then you can answer any questions that might arise. Uh, we're against this pro project. Uh, we don't uh, feel that Mr. Sachs has enough experience in the cremation business. He did state he had 31 years of experience in the funeral business, which is entirely different than the cremation business. Uh, uh, he did uh, work for us uh, on a part-time basis uh, and, uh, and that, but... Uh, he did not work full time for us. He worked more or less on a contract basis. And he has absolutely no experience in the cremation business. He's been in funeral homes that have had crematory, but as far as 
we can tell, and he's expressed, he has had no real experience day to day in operating a, a crematorium. Any other comments you'd like to make? No. Anyone else would like to address the board this evening with regard to this matter? Yes, ma'am, come on up. Hello, my name is Rita Alexander. I'm um, uh, uh, vice president of sales for Cremation Society of Illinois. I uh, just wanted to extend uh, the cremation experience that we found when our business started in 1983 in the south suburbs of Chicago. We expanded specifically into the Homewood area um, because we had the opportunity to build our uh um, the machinery and serve our families in the way that we felt was best fitting for the demographic of the South Suburban area. Um, being in business here specifically since 2012 has allowed us to grow our staff and ensure that we use all of our operators have the certification to be certified crematory operators. Our co-manager of operations, Donald Fritz, before he passed away, practically wrote the book on crematory operation with the Cremation Association of North America, who we have been a part of for a number of years, Mr. Sullivan being a past president as well of that organization. Um, we do think that being able to be in this business is a privilege to the communities that we can serve, as well as we take that responsibility to make sure that those regulations and those certifications are in place for all of our employees so that we can uh, keep safety in mind at the top of the forefront of the services that we provide. That's all I'd like to extrapolate on with our history of being in Homewood and owning our crematory there. Thank you. Mr. Sachs, with regard to that, are you a certified cremation operator? No, not, a, not as uh, now. Um, that, that's a process that I'm going to be taking on later. Um, and that's actually going to be sponsored through the, um, the, the, the company that's going to build the actual machines. Um, I talked to them and I actually talked to uh, Kena, which is um, Cremation Association of North America, and they suggested that I wait until I, I signed a um, contract with the, build, with the builders of the actual machines, because nine times out of ten, they'll sponsor and they'll pay for, for all the dues and, and the training and everything. So. But currently, you're not, a, you're not licensed. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Right. I am Ray Rosado and my husband and I co-own Rabbit Brewing and uh, we're two doors down from where this is proposed and uh, we're not exactly for it. Uh, um, when we originally chose our location, we knew where the Cremation Society was, and we specifically chose a location that was about as far away as you could get um, while still being in the property. Um, now, as wonderful of a job as they do, occasionally there are aromas that come out from the cremation process. And uh, thankfully, because of the distance between our facilities, it's never really a thing. However, I'm really concerned that if you move a facility two doors down from where I am preparing hundreds of gallons of beer, serving that beer, serving pizza to people who are trying to relax and enjoy, I'm really uh, I'm concerned that that would just negatively impact my customer experience. Um, that's all I need to say. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board this evening? No? Board comments, Trustee Purcell. Um, I don't really have any comments. I think you've answered kind of everything that I wondered about when you were up here. And, um, and I thank you guys for coming in and expressing your feelings as well. Trustee Willis. Um, I am uh, concerned about uh, the applicant's level of experience and lack of certification, I, I'm concerned about, about those issues. Trustee Colton. I have some of the same concerns. Um, and also thank you everybody for coming out. The more people talk to us, the more you know we can 
make a good informed decision. Um, but in as in regards to informed decisions, um, I wonder if like I think it would help me a lot to be able to see because I know there was a whole conversation about this um, by the Planning and Zoning Commission, and the minutes haven't been approved yet because that's going to happen in the next meeting, and it would help me a lot. I'd love to see what that dialogue was because I know it was a four to two vote. And, you know, we have those commissions for a reason because we trust them. And I'd like to hear their thoughts. So like, I personally would like to wait on this, but it'd be interesting to see what everybody else thinks. Trustee Heiferman. <laughs> it's sort of kind of a rare time that I disagree with on the recommendation of the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I watched carefully the entirety of that meeting. Um, when I combine what I saw at that meeting with the actual standards for special use form that was presented, um, it makes me say there's no way that I could support this. Um, primarily, the answers to the standards questionnaire, they were just disingenuous and frequently. On most of them, I felt them to be disingenuous um, and kind of inconsiderate not because of the nature of the business and the proximity of neighbors, but the answers were all, I would say, inconsiderate of the neighboring properties. Um, you seem to focus on Cremation Society of Illinois, and it just seemed like an antagonistic thing. There's more going on here than, than meets the eye. So I would suggest that we, you know, with legal advice, you know, look a little deeper into this whole scene, like what's going on there. Um, and actually, that's what I would suggest. You know, everyone take the time to, to watch the meeting and get some advice on how we should proceed. Trustee Harris Jones. I agree. Um, we need to pretty much watch the plan and zoning uh, meeting. And I appreciate the uh, residents and business owners coming out to give your feedback so that we can make a, um, a decision. I greatly appreciate it. Can, can I add something else? Sure. Um, if all the questions were answered correctly, I can say, and not correctly, that's not what I mean. If, if they were answered in a way that, you know, I felt was was better, I still would not support this kind of um, special use for that location. Um, perhaps somewhere else in town, but I don't think that corner of town really should have a second facility. Um, and I just don't see how it would benefit us. Our zoning ordinance uh, gives us uh, latitude as a village board. The zoning ordinance specifically says that a crematorium shall comply with all applicable state and federal laws and regulations. It also says that it should, well, we should encourage compatibility between land uses. The compatibility there would be a brewery, a plumbing company, and a batting cage, and a batting company. And lastly, the village board shall make final decisions on applications for special uses. On the advice of council, uh, I've been told that it would probably be best if this board were to review in detail the minutes of the plan commission zone board. Uh, they have not yet been approved by that body. Therefore, I would ask that this body defer this until we have that in our hands. May I have a motion to do that? So moved. Second. Been moved by Trustee Heiferman, seconded by Trustee Purcell. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell? Aye. Trustee Willis? Aye. Trustee Colton? Aye. Trustee Heiferman? Aye. Trustee Harris Jones? Aye. The motion is approved. General board discussion, Trustee Purcell. Trustee Willis? You ready? Try to stay cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trustee Colton? Yes, yeah, stay hydrated. Trustee Heiferman? I have nothing to say. Trustee Harris Jones? It's not been for days. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? Second. Been moved by Trustee Purcell, seconded by Trustee Colton. Roll call, please. Trustee Purcell. Aye. Trustee Willis. Aye. Trustee Colton. Aye. Trustee Heiferman. Aye. Trustee Harris Jones. Aye. The meeting is adjourned, and we will notify uh, everyone who was here this evening as to when this matter will be before us again. Thank you all.